Ambassador Haley, thank you so much for joining us. No, we really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate it. I want to start with Super Tuesday. We are just days away. You have yet to win a state. How are you feeling heading into Super Tuesday? We're excited. We're hitting every single state. A couple of days ago, I was in Minnesota in the morning, Denver in the afternoon, Utah at night. We're in Virginia today. I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow, but it's anywhere and everywhere until Tuesday. You know, the hard part is Trump has been able to campaign in these places for eight years. We're getting just a couple of days here and there, but the messaging is good and everybody wants to get back to a normal country. They want to go and have a new generational leader that's not dependent on Joe Biden or Donald Trump, but just new solutions for the future. And so we're excited. I'm curious about how you're viewing Super Tuesday. Do you see Super Tuesday as your last stand? We're looking at it as we're hoping for a good competitive showing. That's always been the case in every step is can we continue to stay competitive? When 70% of Americans say they don't want Donald Trump or Joe Biden, you keep going to make sure people have a choice. That's what this is all about. I see that this is a primary. What we know is you can go and see that Donald Trump is moving the party away from what used to be small government and less spending, what used to be peace through strength, what used to be about winning races up and down the ticket. It's not that anymore. It has become one of big government. It's become one where, you know, it's an isolationist. It's one where it's all about one man and it's not about the American people. And that's the part that I'm trying to fix is this is about our kids and other people's grandkids. They need to know that the American dream is still there for them. And right now, the younger generation, all they know is COVID. They know that they don't know if they're going to be able to ever afford a home, get a job, make ends meet, and if war is going to break out. And all of that's under the tent of anger and division. What do you say to Republicans and even some Democrats who say the longer you stay in this race, you're actually helping President Biden? I mean, that's ridiculous because you can't say that if I get out of the race today, it would be the longest general election in history. Um, so the longest general presidential election in history. We're giving people a choice. You know, after Tuesday, you're going to have had, what, another 16, 15 states that have voted. People deserve that. We don't anoint kings in America. We are blessed in America that we actually have elections and people can show the power of their voice. We want that to take place. And I think competition is always a good thing. It starts conversations that otherwise wouldn't be happening. You've obviously sharpened your tone against former President Trump. I want to ask you about some of the latest developments as it relates to the GOP frontrunner. What was your reaction to learning that the Supreme Court is going to take up the immunity case in the January 6th? Uh, trial. I mean, I think it's I think you need to have the Supreme Court settle this. I don't think that a president should be immune from anything. I think that the president has to live under laws, too. And he's asking for things that no other president's ever asked for. So I hope the Supreme Court rules quickly um, and I hope they make their decision. But I think that they do have to make an give an answer on this. When you say you hope the Supreme Court rules quickly, do you mean that you would like to see this case go to trial before Election Day if Trump is the nominee so that voters know the outcome of this case? I think voters are going to want to know what they're walking into. And if they're walking into a president who's still going to have to be in court or if they're walking into a presidency where he can get rid of a court case, voters are going to want to know that. And so I think that that's the part the Supreme Court needs to spell out is, OK, when are you going to give this verdict? What does that mean for people who have voted? And are they going to have full answers before the general election? That's going to be key. But this isn't just about Trump. I would want this for Biden. I would want it for Clinton. I want it for Trump. This should be for any president. We need to make sure that no president ever thinks they're above the law. And, and just to put a fine point on it, you are saying you think that voters deserve to know the verdict if this case does go to trial in the January 6th case before Election Day. Well, I think he deserves the right to defend himself. And I think that, unfortunately, court cases take a long time and lawyers can drag them out and I think that's probably going to happen but I do think that voters will want to know what's going to happen before it happens and if you know hopefully they'll get the opportunity to know that but there's likelihood that they may not you have said that no one deserves total immunity no one is mm -hmm. above the law do you think that there is any scenario where the Supreme Court decides that Mr. Trump has total immunity? 
I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how this is going to fall out, but I think that this needs to be clarified. We've never had to clarify it before, but I hope that this clarifies it going forward. But based on your opinion, you don't think anyone should be given total immunity? I just think a president has to live according to the laws, too. You don't get complete immunity. And I think we've got to make sure that they know that there's no, there's, you can't just assume that anything and everything is, you're going to get full immunity. Presidents have to live according to certain standards as well. We can't go and just give them free reign to do whatever they want to do. I will tell you that just moments ago, Jack Smith requested a summer trial date for the classified documents case. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the classified documents case should go to trial before Election Day, before November? Well, it's the same thing, whether it's Joe Biden or whether it's Donald Trump. I was at the United Nations. I know what it's like to be around classified information. We know how it's supposed to be handled. You can't even leave the room with it sitting on a desk or you will get called out for it and you, you can get fined for it. This is something where you know how protected this is. You know people could be in danger if it gets in the wrong hands. And so the idea that both of these men claim they didn't know they weren't supposed to take it is impossible because it is made very clear to us how it's supposed to be handled, how it's supposed to be stored, how it's supposed to be protected. And what should be very important going forward is there needs to be processes in place so that this doesn't happen again. And Former President Trump was indicted. President Biden was not indicted. Do you think that Trump's case should go to court, should go to trial before well, I, November well, if he's the nominee? I think they both should be treated the same way. I mean, if Joe Biden had classified documentation and Donald Trump had classified documentation, that worries me as an American. You don't go bragging about what you have. You don't go having it stored in a garage where somebody else could get it. You have to know the responsibility of that. And I think it's unfortunate when they say Joe Biden didn't know any better. Yes, he did. And it's unfortunate when Donald Trump can go and brag about it to people that aren't supposed to see it. That is wrong. Both of them are wrong. Both of them should be held accountable and responsible for it. Everybody that works in the Foreign Service in any sort of security situation knows you can't sloppily handle that classified information or people will get hurt. Her said that Biden was sloppy, but he couldn't prove that a, a law had been broken beyond a reasonable doubt. But just very quickly, yes or no, should Trump's classified document case go to trial, do you think? before November? I think all of the cases should be dealt with before November. We need to know what's going to happen before it ha before the presidency happens, because after that, should he become president, I don't think any of it's going to get heard. Speaking of this split screen between Trump and Biden, both of them are at the border today at the same time. You've already visited the border. Why not go back this week when both of your challengers, in essence, are going to be there. Well, it's amazing because we did. We went 400 miles down the border. And as governor, I passed the toughest illegal immigration law in the country. So I know the importance of securing the border. And what I saw on the border was horrific. But what happened today is comical. You've got Joe Biden at the border when all this time he could have done something to stop the millions of people coming across the border. You've got Donald Trump at the border where just a couple weeks ago he could have told Congress to go in there and strengthen that bill and get it out and instead he said don't pass anything until after the general election. Both of these men are responsible. We can't wait one more day to secure that border. People are going to get hurt. You saw the Georgia case, that's not the first one or the last one. We owe it to the American people to secure the border, make sure we defund sanctuary cities, make sure we put 25,000 Border Patrol and ICE agents on the ground and let them do their job, go back to remain in Mexico, and instead of catch and release, go to catch and deport. We've got to get it done. Let me ask you about Mitch McConnell. He is, has announced that he's stepping down from his leadership position in the Senate. He will almost certainly be replaced by a Trump loyalist. How do you think that will impact the Senate? Well, I think, you know, certainly Senator McConnell has had an amazing career. There's many things that we owe him a debt of gratitude for, but I really commend him for realizing that we need a new generational leader. I wish that our presidential candidates would do the same thing. I, you know, the fact that we have two candidates in their 80s blows my mind. But, you know, looking at that situation, I think what's happening is where is the Republican Party going? If it is going to be the party of Donald Trump, that is the party that is not concerned about fiscal responsibility. Donald Trump never talks about it. It's the party that's getting more away from peace through strength and becoming isolationist. And it's the party that's becoming more about one man. And so if that's the direction, the Republican Party is going to continue to lose people. I was in Michigan. 
Michigan was a bright spot in 2012, winning races up and down the ticket. Since Donald Trump became president, they lost, they've lost the governor's mansion, they lost the state house, they lost the state senate. Went to Minnesota, the exact same thing. I went to Colorado, no Republican has won over 45% statewide since Donald Trump became president. We lost in 2018, 2020, 2022. When you look at the early states, he may have won them, I'll give him that, he did not get 35 to 40% of the votes in those. Those are real numbers. And you can't win a general election if you can't win this segment of the Republican Party and the independents who've left the party. Are you concerned that the MAGA philosophy, which you have campaigned against, will now govern the Senate? Well, it's not a philosophy I govern against. It's policies that I think are not in the right direction. I mean, I am an accountant. I think that if we don't fix this debt, we are going off a fiscal cliff. And the idea that we're paying more money in interest than we are in our defense budget, that's a national security threat. The idea that we would go and say that Trump would say that he would encourage Putin to invade our allies. You know, to encourage to be with a thug who arrests American journalists and holds them hostage, who kills his own political opponents, who's made no bones about wanting to destroy America, over the allies who stood with us at 9-11? That's a dangerous proposition. America can never be so arrogant to think we don't need friends. And just finally, to your supporters, you're going to be talking to them here tonight. What do you say to them? What do you tell your supporters? Are you confident that you can win a state on Super Tuesday? What I'm telling them is, thank you for using the power of your voice. Now go show it at the ballot box, because that's the only one that matters. And I remind them that in a general election, you're given a choice, but in a primary, you make your choice. This is the chance for them to make their choice. And this is about a direction of wouldn't it be nice if we lived in a country where you could have a family dinner and no political fights? Wouldn't it be nice to live in a country where you could go to work and not worry about what you say or get demoted? Wouldn't it be nice if we lived in a country that could strongly disagree but not hate each other over it? That's the country I'm trying to get us to. That's the place I know America can be. It's just trying to make sure that everybody knows they all have a part in that solution. All right, Ambassador Haley, thank you so much. Thanks I appreciate so much. Great it. To I'm see looking you. forward to tomorrow. Yeah, it'll Great be fine. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.